Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. I'm Frozen and today we're going to do some Slay the Spire, and we're going to do a silent run, because that is what I want to do. I did try and record one earlier, but unfortunately that did not go the way I wanted it to. I will pick three combatants have three less HP. Can we get an elite early? Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. No, we cannot get an early elite fight. I mean, there is a chance this way, but... Maybe I'm giving too much up. We'll try it. Yeah, so... Uh, we'll take the Cloak and Dagger. I like those. So what ended up happening <laughs> in the last run that I was recording... Nice. That's actually really good. Um... I got a good run, like, I had a good set, I had Endless Agony, I had the Finisher, and I had some card draw. The problem was, is I came against things that just out-damaged what I had. Oh, nice. Instant death. See, I would like the Finisher here as well, for this exact reason, with the Cloak and Daggers and the Shivs. Um, but a second Cloak and Dagger is more important, I think, for now. Like, shivs in general are useful. Finisher needs to have that. Take that. Lose the max life. Let's continue. Uh, we'll smith. Oh, no. We'll rest. We'll rest. Because I'm an idiot. Ooh. Uh, remove a card from my deck, please. Remove a block. Let's fight the elite. A free elite is good. I did kind of maybe sacrifice quite a lot to get that. But maybe I didn't. Eh, Bane is interesting. Sneak attack. Discarding cards is something that may not happen. Uh, deflect? Eh, we'll leave that for now. To the treasure chest. Tunks and Rod. Losing less HP is always good. So this is kind of the reason why I like the Cloak and Dagger. I get better block than a standard block. And I have the ability to attack as well. And I don't have to use the attack straight away. Like, I can save them for the finisher, which is just so good. You know? I do love the silent. Like, as admittedly, like I feel like they're restrictive in their style of play. I think they have the most like successful variants, in my opinion. Applying poison to all with weak exhaust, sneak attack, sucker punch. Eh, I mean, a crippling cloud could be pretty useful. Not the poison though. We're not really going to go poison, so I'll leave it. Uh, we'll go here, we'll upgrade now, because I didn't upgrade last time. Cloak and Dagger, two ships. And we'll take on the Elite. Just deal as much damage. I probably should have drank this, actually. Eh, we'll save it. Um, attack. We'll take care of the strike and then just defend so we're fully defended. Just a little bit of damage here is still good. Like, they're going to start wearing me down eventually, so I'd rather um, be able to defend as much as possible. Put in neutralize, two shivs. And then... I'll guess we'll block again. Just to make sure we're fully blocked. Then we get a free turn to attack. But yeah. I mean, I have been playing terribly at a lot of games recently. Like, I'm not playing the best at all. And... Sometimes that's just the way things are, you know? 
I hate to say it, but they generally are. Oh, I have buffer. What gives you the buffer? Oh, that gives me the buffer. Should have realised. Um, if I don't attack, can I kill them in the next couple of turns? Theoretically, yes. So minimising damage is more important. Because I'll do the next debuff again. In theory. Yeah. As long as we get A attack now, we should be fine. Ooh, frozen egg. So powers can be useful if I pick them up. And out maneuver? Meh. Masterful stab. Interesting. The flying knee isn't bad, though. Like, just straight up better than attack. And I do like the flying knee. Yeah, we'll pick up a flying knee. We'll go over here. We don't need to heal, so we'll smith again. Flying too weak is pretty useful. So we'll do that. Uh, neutralize, cloak and dagger. Strike. Strike. Oh, I should have uh, drank that first. <laughs> uh, my brain sometimes just does not like doing stuff, as always. Flying knees. Strike and strike again. I will take damage in this fight to try and finish quicker. I guess we don't. We take the buffer anyway, so it makes no difference. Um, This is still worth it. Yeah, if I had drank this, we'd have finished it this turn, thus saving us 10 damage. Okay, 9 damage. Ooh, curses and a colorless potion. An endless agony. Hmm. I would like to, but I've got no card draw yet, so we'll leave it. If I had card draw, it'd be a different story. I probably would have took, taken that. Um... Again, upgrade the other cloak and dagger. We're doing it for the shivs more than anything else. I'd like to get an accuracy or something, that'd be interesting. Or um, a dexterity. Uh, neutralize the cloak and dagger. I would like to point out that was pretty much all my attacks. And again, I, for I forget to use potions on the first turn. I'm terrible. Um, use the colorless potion here. What do we get? Uh, add one random card to into your hand. Exhaust. Draw two cards from your hand. Huh. I put a card from there onto my draw pile. Draw three cards. Uh, we'll go jack of all trades. We get blind. Apply weak. Blind knee. And then survivor because it is the best. And again, I forgot to use the strength potion, but. What are we going to do, eh? We'll drink it now. I am, like, terrible at it. Like, just remembering to use potions and stuff is something that... I don't know, I always seem to fail at. But yeah, I mean, at the moment, I've been, like, um, chilling out. I'm setting up a plan in my head to... Oh, I should have defended. Um, to get myself back into a routine. And I'm kind of looking for, like, um, ways to have quick and easy meals without having to uh, do all my meal prep. Because at the moment, like, I set out 
I, I've kind of said in another video where I, I kind of set out a bunch of meal plans. So I will normally cook like a batch of food for like at least um, dinner or tea, whatever you'd like to call it. I'll end up cooking those meals as a batch to cover that amount of stuff. So, you know, I'll do like a, a pasta bake or something or, you know, a jambalaya or all that sort of stuff. And then I'll make like three, three about three meals normally is where my limitation on what I make with them is. So that is kind of where we sit with them. Survivor on this. Cloak and Dagger. Don't fully block this, but it is still uh, pretty good. The worry is this. Because it upgrades all the burns. They're really annoying. And then what ends up happening is, is like, we'll, um, Kind of spend a bit of time to uh, say, like, do something in an afternoon or something like that after work, and I'll either have to make a decision where I either use the meals that I've already prepped, which is normally fine. Um, but that might mean then. Oh shit! Play card game one block. I do like the after image though. Shift plus. I really do like this. Really incentivizes the shift deck though. Um, after image works really well with this, but we'll pick the after image up first. Um, I got two on my worry, so actually, yeah, that's fine. I'll get the extra energy for a curse. Don't really care what the other two were. Um, I would like to see an early shop, so we'll do that. Eh. Uh, next card I play is played twice, right? A double after image, please, is delightful. Especially against this particular uh, enemy. Just because it means I can at least like gain like two block every card I play, which is very useful. Like I'm, I'm not gonna waste around time knowing that I won't be able to block. So we'll just prevent that. We got a buffer as well, so it's still a good position. Um, slice another flying knee. I'll take that into a shop. This is where we start removing some attacks. So we'll do that first. Um, in venom applies poison. Um, I would like blur as well to be honest, but we'll take that. Mm. Applying thorns as well. Mm. Do I take a hand agreed? Yes. And a blur. Um, potions are worthwhile? I'll pick that one up. We are all spent out. Use every penny. Oh, nice. So, play the after image. Play the Envenom. Like, I didn't want to go a poison build. But Envenom works really well with the ship deck, just to get the extra bit of damage out there. 
it's like support damage. And I think I've mentioned that before, actually. Um, um, support DPS type stuff, you know? I think I mentioned that in the past of just like um, discussing it on like where I think poison and like DOT effects really exist within RPGs and stuff like that, you know? I should apply that there, you're dead anyway. It's probably been a very long time since I've brought this discussion up, but maybe I have brought it up like not too long ago as such. Uh, strike. Hand of Greed! Gimme gold. A uh, catalyst would seem interesting. Sucker Punch is kind of meh. Leg Sweep. I don't mind Leg Sweep, but I think it's too expensive for what I want. So we'll leave it. So, I think it actually probably is exactly the same video that I kind of brought it up in last time. Um, do this first. Play the Flying Knee. Play Cloak and Dagger. Then we play the Blur. So, DOT effects. Um, the problem that I always have, and every game seems to have the same issue with it, no matter whatever you play or everything else, DOT effects are never really um, supported in the way that they could be, right? Uh, just deal 20 damage, and then survive it up. So what I mean is, is uh, damage over time effects are either way too overpowered and overtuned, where they do too much damage too quickly, or build up way too fast, therefore they need to be nerfed, at which point then they're not worth playing anymore. Yeah? Or they do such pitiful damage that there's no really incentive to use them, even if you could fit them in a build, because, like, you could get like a 10% bonus to your attack rather than trying to deal an extra bit of damage over time as an effect, yeah? Uh, you're dead anyway, so we'll put you there. So that's kind of the problem that it ends up being with it. And I've been thinking about this a lot on like, how would you fix that as an issue, yeah? And sort of... My, my thought process would be is that damage over time effects kind of amp the damage themselves and also apply debuffs to the enemy while doing it. Interesting. Uh, is Bane worth it now? Technically, yeah, it is. And because it, it deals damage twice, I think it does trigger twice, doesn't it? Eh, uh, we'll leave it for now. That could be a mistake. Uh, do we want to go shop an elite? Eh, uh, no, the shop's kind of pointless. We'll go this way. Let's play! Tactician, interesting. Another neutralize. Don't want tactician. Neutralize is great. I'll pick that up. Yeah, um, dramatic entrance, I'll take that as well. And let's go face off against the elite. Uh, drink that potion first. After image. In Venom. Attack you. Take the dramatic entrance. Then shiv, shiv. And the flying knee. We're done. Such a good first turn, that. So, yeah. So, say, like, while they were poisoned and taking the damage, they would also basically be, like, having reduced effectiveness of, like, their attack or something, because this might sound silly, but I would believe that someone that was poisoned would struggle to attack you and also defend, so they would take, in general, just 
more damage back, they'd also be less effective at attacking until the poison was removed. But then the poison, the effect that you're having, has to be very minimal because of that, yeah? We just fully defend up here because we can carry it across next turn. That's where I think, like, poison, or just like damage over time builds, need to have their effectiveness. So, kind of Pokemon do something very similar to that, where, like, um, uh, defend and blur again to carry across. Where burn will actually deal damage over time, which is kind of minuscule, but it'll also lower the opponent's attack, and it's so effective in the way of you having to burn a particular Pokemon in some cases, yeah? Like, like generally, it's such a good strategy. And I'm surprised that... Uh, poison Stab? Quick Slash? To be honest, I think I'm good. Like, Poison Stab seems interesting to help up gain the poison. Maybe it is worth picking that up, actually. Now think about it. Uh, what are we upgrading? 25, 25 gold? Interesting. Dramatic Entrance to 12. That would help ramp up poison, but we're not really doing it because of that. That's doing it anyway. That'd be more damage. Uh, blur is meh. I guess the Dramatic Entrance is probably pretty good. Or the Greed Hand. Yeah, upgrade the Greed. Give me more gold. Why not? And I, I, I kind of raised this issue with friends before, of like, why is it that this is so difficult to kind of figure out as such, right? Yeah. Like, it'd be, it'd be so much easier for a company to think themselves, like, when they're developing a game, like, oh yeah, we want to put, like, poison damage in and stuff like that. And it's like, well, how can we make poison more efficient? Uh, survivor, drop defend, flying knee. And in my opinion, yeah, to make it more efficient, the best thing to go about it is to, for it to apply debuffs with the damage over time effect. As for how you get rid of that DOT, that is the particular question you want to be asking when it comes down to it. I would say. Eh. Just, uh... Get rid of more, most of the damage we can. We're going to take a big hit, but that's fine. I mean, yeah, because then it gives an incentive for essentially for you to have a poison glass and um, all sorts of other interesting ideas come from that. Fletch it. I have a good amount of skills, don't I? Um, how many attacks do we have technically? We've got one... Two attacks, three, four, five attacks versus six attacks versus one skill, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. And it's Fletcher's plus, although the innate on the backstab. <laughs> if that was upgraded, I'd probably take it. Um. Yeah, we'll go with the elite path. Why not? We got a shop on the way. A regal pillow, nice. So now we get to uh, heal more when we rest, which you probably may never do. Okay, so for the after image first, you have two skills. So Fletcher does twice. We try and kill you first. The back. Now this is the question I always have at this point is So 
So he's taking six, six, three, nine. I'd have to have another attack on him. It's terrible. I should have done this beforehand, but this kills this off, so I don't have to worry about it later. I don't take any damage because the buffer kicks in. Right? Yeah. I guess we're in Venom. Uh, blur. Defend? Nah, set that up for the kill later. Split the damage at least a little bit. But yeah, I, I, I like how the poison on this works in the sense of how you can stack the damage. That's great. Like, you know, someone that is poisoned would theoretically, you know, the more they're poisoned would take more damage. And the body would try to fight that poison off over time, right? Like, like the, the theory behind it makes sense. And I think, like, if you apply that knowledge to a RPG or stuff like that, then you can have classes like a sort of poison assassin you can do something more interesting with. Eh, we don't need another no, flat chance. Nightmare would seem interesting, but we'll leave it. Or things like an alchemist and stuff like that, where they can apply both buffs and debuffs with some DOT damage as well, which is pretty good. Second turn, getting some block. Getting some potions. My potions are doubly... No, they're not. That was the other run I was looking at before. Yeah, let's remove a card. At this point, I think I remove another defend. Do we, no, we remove the strike. Yeah. Uh, power for a little while I plan is plus, so I can still keep that. Calipers would be interesting, but didn't have the gold for it anyway. Uh, put three random attacks from your draw pile into your hand exhaust. Hmm. Hmm. Her hand, the bottom of your draw pile, cost zero until played. Poor thought. Interesting. We'll just pick that potion up and be a wildlife plants. We'll pick it up. I do like a wildlife plants. I think it's kind of probably a little bit overboard, but you know. Um. After image always first. So everyone takes some damage. Cloak and dagger. Shiv. Shiv. Um, flying knee. Into wildlife plants. And then we have to keep the strike. Oh, yeah. And centennial puzzle. The first time we lose HP, we draw three cards. Interesting. Um, the Envenom could be good, but this turn is more about us uh, defending than it will be attacking, so. We'll do that, then Blur, try and carry, I would say try and carry some, but we're not going to. Uh, kind of annoying, I can get another attack in, because that would have uh, stopped them doing what they're about to do. So I guess we'll neutralize first then. Into the flying knee. Poison stab. Defend. Defend. And here I will do this. Ah, oh, come on, really. You could have hit this one as a 50-50 chance. But we drew it again anyway, so it makes a difference. 25 gold, nice. Um, if enemy's weak, gain an energy and draw a card. And I have two ways to apply weak, and one of them is upgraded. So heal hook is really worth it here. Um, don't really need the fire, I've got enough cards for what I want. Ooh, another shop. 
let's see what's in here. Noxious fumes is kind of nice. Um, I have enough to get rid of a card and do that as well. So, yeah. But what, what, what am I getting rid of from doing that? A defend? Or buy noxious fumes? I mean, it's upgraded. Like, why wouldn't I pick it up? You know? Receive five apparition. Ethereal gain not one that tangible. Yeah, that's terrible. Smith. What are we smithing up today? Um, the other neutralized, so the week will last, like, indefinitely. You and your minions. Uh, we get the Envenom first, that's great. Oh, after a minute, should have played that. Dramatic Entrance. Cloak and Dagger. Shiv. Shiv. Into a while, they plans. Retain both of those. Say that for the 10 damage to everything. We can apply the Vulnerable later. We can draw cards if we need to, which seems like a good idea here, actually. So we'll do that first. Apply the Vulnerable. Draw some cards. Didn't get another uh, skill. Very annoying. But you currently are Vulnerable, yes. You're not weak, but we can make you weak, so let's do that. We do a heal hook, because that's free. We get to draw a card. Cloak and Dagger. That makes Fletch. It's really worth it now. We'll use that on one of these. Stacks the poison up. Into a Cloak and Dagger. We get some defense. To a Shiv on you, so now you're dead. Do that. Into the Flying Knee. So down to 11. This would give not enough. So I probably should just play the Survivor here. Right? And then toss a strike away. Heat the blur. And the Noxious Fumes? Nah, we keep the Flying Knee. It's like we're fully defended, we've got nothing to worry about. It's a good run. It is a good run. Oh, you don't give me what I wanted. Oh well. Uh, flying knee. No point defending, so keep that, keep that. But yeah, back to the whole poison idea, because I lost track of where I was. You know, silly me. So poison is essentially interesting with sort of having like a debuff effect because essentially it means that you can have essentially like your hex masters and stuff like that from other games where they actually play those card you know play those classes they make them more useful as a baseline because they can actually apply debuffs and everything else and then it also opens up for the reverse of that and that's what I think a lot of RPGs don't ever realize is that, okay, so if we've got the ability to you know, buff up our party as such um, we're not fully blocked so we'll do this, at least to try and block as much damage even though the buffer will kick in anyway so you can have a class that is designed to give buffs, but with the downside of affecting them with top, like with poison and stuff like that. So you also get like a benefit to doing those things to your own classes, yeah. Or you could apply those same attributes to your enemies. And turn, keep that. And some games have tried this. The issue is the buff that you get is not worth the downside that you cause, and that's always been a problem. 
um, the flying knee. Into the strike. Into the poison stab. Oh, I couldn't get the greed off. I couldn't do the greed. The greed play would have been great. But at least with the um, wildlife plans, I can always keep the greed. I can greed for greed. Uh, glass knife is pretty good, but phantasmal killer next. Your next attack deals double damage. Yeah, that's fifty damage on the greed hand. I can no longer smith. Place ring of snakes to draw one additional card per turn. Hmm. I mean, with the the two innate cards, the two additional cards at the start of combat is more beneficial than the one card every turn. Because I just get rid of those cards immediately from my hand. The extra energy is more useful in that first turn because of it. Think about it. But yeah. At least that's kind of my take on like damage over time effects. I always just prefer them to have that sort of interesting or more interesting impact, you know? Because otherwise, they're kind of just like, meh. You know. And just having something that is just meh all the time is kind of, you know, pointless. And then you could do, like, so many more interesting uh, abilities and stuff by doing that. You either die to poison, I will, I will get my, uh, yeah, you just die to poison. I'm not going to go bother with that. Because we've all probably tried it at some point, the, uh, sort of, like, Thousand Cuts build or something like that. Not on this particular run, um, in this game, but, like, you know, Death of a Thousand Cuts is kind of, like, a common term that's used for, essentially... One cost for each card discarded this turn. Eh. It's normally used in a phrase where someone doesn't really kind of intend to kill their opponent. They're just trying to uh, show off as such. Oh, I could give them the greed. No, that's terrible. Um, dramatic engine is really good. I think Fletch is actually bad, and I will toss that out. But with our Phantasmal Killer, it's really good. Um... Nah, Fletcher's is bad in this deck. I got too many attacks. I'm fully healed, thank you. Um let's start it off. The usual prompt that we always have. Issue with this is um you kinda gotta diversify your damage a little bit. Which is kind of annoying. But at least I don't take damage this turn. Do I get to draw cards? No, because of the buffer. Cloak and Dagger. Well, I plan to set that up. Um, defend. Heal hook. Survivor. So yeah, it's like, you know, it's like you spend most of your time just basically attacking your opponent, not really doing much damage, and then suddenly it's like, oh, they've attacked them so much, the game is over. And there are kind of, like, um, there are a few card games and stuff like that that have this kind of idea of that. Magic the Gathering did have its own version of it. Which I think were tokens that you put in your opponent? Like plague tokens or something? I cannot remember. That's my problem. I'm going to look that up later probably and say, and be like, oh my god, I'm such an idiot. But yeah. And I love that idea as a mechanic, though the issue is, is if you apply those tokens to 
quickly, it's kind of like, well, it's just an easy kill on anyone, isn't it? Almost had them both. But it's fine, we can kill that on the next turn. So yeah, like it, it is possible to have those mechanics in there where it's like you don't actually deal damage, which is kind of cool. I would just like it if we had the reverse of that, you know? Where you do very little damage over time that kind of just stacks up. Yeah, we're taking the noxious fumes, why not at this point? We are going into that poison build-esqueness with defensive tools as always. Because, you know, that is what I do. That is what I do. And heal hook. Oh, yeah. That's just so good here. And we take the damage there, and we're done. Because I'm always a big fan of stuff like that. Always have been. Love it to bits. It's just absolutely brilliant. That really wear off, because, yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to apply poison to everything. Cloak and Dagger first. Uh, we'll attack you to get poison on you. We'll do it again. We'll then block. We'll slap you a poison to make sure you're done, and then we'll fully defend. Not bad. What we got? And uh, neutralize, because that's pretty good. We'll like plans, defend, cloak and dagger. And we still got like defense to make sure we block well, at least one of those, and I would love to have the buffer take the other one, but it can't. So, strike. Hmm. I guess we can't do it right now. So, set poison. Keep the greed hand, keep the poison. The hand of greed. We shall greed for this. Like, 100%. Flying knee, flying knee, cloak and dagger. Shiv, shiv, that. Give me gold. New dash. Do you like a dash? Interesting, there would be a catalyst actually. Like once you start getting like into late game, that could be pretty useful to have. I'll pick one up. Uh, we'll go for the elite fight. So I would like the elite fight again. Upgrade all cards, but can no longer heal. Interesting. Gain gold, but gain normality. Two of them. Not that great. But I can block one of them, though. And do we have a shot coming up? We do, but normality would mean... I have no choice but to go to the shop. Hmm. Yeah, let's fight a boss from Act 1. Why not? Uh, after image, in Venom. Into the grand entrance. The flying knee. Another attack. Another attack. We are all set up, ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to drink this first, a block. That being weak is pretty good. Next turn, attacks turn, deal double. Pretty good. Flying knee. Killer. Neutralize. Um, I will drink this because it's going to be better to at least have the attacks now. Blur, I can settle that up. And um, we'll save the poison. We shall save the poison. Fully defended. Delightful. And we also got that. 
heal hook straight away. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that. The one thing I precisely wanted, and we'll just end turn here. There's no worry about anything else. That is the combo. Phantasm Killer with the Hand of Greed is 50 damage by itself. It's brilliant. Now I got the Wild Lake Plans. That's a good setup. Into Cloak and Dagger. Do it again. And then just play everything out. Good old classic Poison Ship stack. But yeah, I've always had like ideas and I got stuff in the back of my mind where I like um I would love one day to set up, which I'm kind of always doing in my free time anyway. You know, actually learning how to program stuff and set things up and unload. Oh non attack cards in your hand. Deal fourteen damage. Yeah, it was like 40 damage to the wall, it'd be interesting, but it's not. You know? Yeah, the slow guy. You are kind of my favourite guy, because you take more damage the more stuff I do. So that's why I like you. Far more interesting. But yeah, I'm kind of interested in, like, um, into games design anyway, because I just find it more entertaining. Of, like, what is the best way to kind of, like, set stuff up and how about RPG mechanics and stuff are always uh, my favourites to kind of have a look at and manipulate and see if you can improve, you know? Because you can do so much with them that it can be like really worth it. Let's set the defense up. And I guess we'll just blur here because I can keep a defender anyway for next turn. And the catalyst which will double the poison later. This guy is very annoying. And Venom. Neutralize. Flying knee. Just defend. And defend. And keep both of those. You gain six poison per turn, which is really good. Plus whatever I deal to it as well. Uh, cloak and Dagger. Um, defend. The Hand of Greed. Do we blur here? Blur is enough. Just remember to... um. Do my attacks last and do the uh, skills first. I always forget that. And here, hook. And to defend. Neutralize. Hmm. I should survive right here. Again, we'll keep this, because I just basically want to make sure I have enough damage at some point. Really? Um, guess we're defending first. Flying knee. Flying knee. Strike. Strike. And I could set this to be 40, which is technically, and I can't, so run out of mana. I will just throw that away. <laughs> the panic. I'm like, what do I do? 
No, oh, we got it back anyway. Catalyst, because we'll set this up. Strike. Phantasmal Killer. The Greed Hand is not enough this turn to get the kill. So we'll just leave it. We'll die anyway to next turn. I barely survive. Um, can I draw cards? I can draw cards. Let's try. Nah. Just end turn. I'm wasting time for no reason. Oh, I kind of acted way too quickly. Okay, I'll pick the blur up. Um, dig to get a relic. No, we'll rest here because I get lots of healing back. And do we fight the boss and go to a shop? Yeah, why not? When we get this, we can use the other half of the Omori. Why not? After image. Dramatic entrance. Neutralize. And attack. Defend. Blur noxious fumes. We can play everything, cool. But yeah, I'm kind of always been messing around with like Like in the background of stuff of like world design and like what's the most efficient way to do something as such. Because to me it's kind of very important on like if stuff can be useful and how you plan that out, right? Yeah, we'll kill you off because that's going to be a problem. Like, because, I mean, anyone can, like, design characters and I think when it comes down to how you design characters and how we know they react sometimes can be very important. So, for me, I'm always kind of this idea that I like more realism. We'll leave Catalyst in the deck for now. Oh, I've started with Combat Blur. Oh, I got lucky. Made sure I got the one I wanted. Uh, Poison Stab. And then go Cloak and Dagger. The flying knee into a wildlife plans. Because we're going to keep the hand of greed in the survivor. I do wonder how much gold I've got from the hand of greed. I'm kind of interested. You know? Uh, I don't have enough damage on that. That should be dead anyway, so... And we'll heal hook it, so now it's gone completely. Attack, attack, and then just defend. Keep both of these. And now we can use the Hand of Greed. As long as we get one attack, which you do. On there. A few more attacks. Just neutralize you into blur. Do I have to re survivor? No, we've got a hand to greed that. Take a bit of damage, it's fine. Annoyed. I am annoyed. Ooh. Well, we always start with that anyway. Starting off with a hand of greed would be interesting. Having a neutralized to play straight away actually is pretty good, so I'll pick that up. Backflip, finisher. Yes, please. With this deck and what can happen in it, Toxic Egg. So we upgrade skills now. Not a fight. 
Uh, I wish I had one colorless card to my deck if I want it. Um, add X of ready cards. They cost zero and this turn. Interesting. Time bomb. Swift strike. Hmm. Don't really draw enough cards for this to really be worthwhile. I need more defensive tools if I'm going to go that route. So I'll just leave. Because that's what I realise is this deck does need more defence. <laughs> As he says, picking up an accuracy. And a cloak and dagger. Apply poison to everything. Yes, please. And then... Get rid of a strike. Delightful! <laughs> Delightful! Twisted Funnel, everything now starts with poison after image first. And then we'll defend to kind of counteract these guys. Uh, we'll neutralize you because you're doing damage. We'll then blur into dramatic entrance. Into a blur. Um, into an attack. And take some damage. So you're dead in two turns anyway, so I don't need to really worry about you that much. These guys, though, are the ones I'm more worried about. This guy explodes anyway, but we'll kill him off before then. No, you are done. Cool. The Hand of Greed! Um, Shiv. Hook and Dagger. I'll heal hook it. I know it dies to poison, but it's kind of important. That I do, uh, try and attempt to kill it off. I would like to use those, but, um, we're probably going for a poison victory against these guys with the Noxious Fumes up now as well. It's going to be more effective. Just use you on there. Survivor. And one attack. But yeah, I mean, I've got interesting ideas, and my problem is, is always having. It, it, it's, it's kind of like thinking to yourself, oh yeah, sure, I'll go and do that, you know? I get block damage so I can actually still kill out this turn. You know, it's having that point of which, like, uh, yeah, sure, I, you know, I'll put the what I'm doing aside to literally go and do that now. Actually, all that attack is really good. So it is kind of on my list, actually, you know? After image. Dramatic entrance. Cloak and dagger. That neutralize you. Shiv. Shiv. And agreed. Now we survive us, so we fully block. <laughs> I was going to say. I thought to do something really silly. You know. I'm always interested in things like manage like management games as well for the exact same reasoning, so uh finisher is kinda cool. We'll uh shiv and shiv will attack. Will that attack to discard one and finish you. And you're just dead next turn anyway. Oh no you're not. Um but now you are. Yeah, there's it's interesting ideas, and one thing, yeah, I'll take a dagger spray as well, that I should learn from. No, I'll avoid that elite, because I don't want to ruin this run. I've got a good chance of winning. Um, I guess we should just double blur here, actually. Because it means I at least can keep 
my defense from this turn set up. And then if I put any other defense on, I can save that as well. Uh, shiv, shiv. Flying knee. Defend. Strike. And turn. But yeah, having the drive to sit there and just, you know what, sit down and go to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to do this because this is, you know, an idea I want to accomplish. And sometimes it's the idea of like, why are you doing the idea, yeah? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for other people? Like, you know, what's the drive? What's the motivator to make you want to do something? And when should you think to yourself like, Am I going to be able to accomplish this? Is this the right course of action for me to do this? And so on and so forth, you know? Like, for me, um, making videos on YouTube and stuff like that is more or less down to the fact that... Because, why not? I enjoy playing games, I like chilling out, and... You know, I like voicing my own inner thoughts, and to be honest, it j this just gives me an audience to do it, which is uh, kind of cool. Whether people listen or not is irrelevant to me. I uh, don't really care about that. <laughs> Which is uh, hilarious to say when you think about it. I mean, I enjoy people enjoying the content I put up and the fact that, you know, people get a kick out of me suffering. <laughs> I just. But yeah, it's kind of nice that people also kind of enjoy this sort of content and, you know, like listening to me talk as such about random rubbish or random ideas or things like that as well. Like, I'm terrible at communicating in general, even at the best of times, and formulating my ideas was uh, not the best. You know, I can be really good at teaching someone. Hmm. Infinite Blaze is really good. And the fact it starts in my hand is pretty nice as well. But I'm going to take the Poison Stab for the stacking of the poison as we're going to get the Time Eater. I'm going to just dig here. Nice, actually. That's pretty good. Because I'd rather put poison on them as much of it as I can. Ooh, after image first, should have done that. Uh, blur. Blur. There goes spray. All that attack. Okay. Could have upgraded all those cards in my hand, but I think I got a better turn to do it. Uh, Queen Strength. In my draw pile. Interesting. Loses 9 strength this turn. Yes, please. Venom. Because this stacks up poison now, which is nice. I don't need to worry about anything else. And I'm just going to not attack, so I need to get these... Oh, I should have attacked. I didn't realize I was at 11. The blur is still on, though, so we should be alright. And I'm here, which do Noxious Fumes, and it'll kick my turn out. Snap Poison will always stay around, so that's worthwhile. Uh... Neutralize, defend, accuracy. You get played for zero. But yeah, there, there are other things that I would like to do at some point as well. And I've kind of got them in the back burner. And there are ideas that I know I will enjoy once I can kind of do it and get it set up. The issue for me is just...
basically telling myself to go and do it. You know? There are things I want to learn, skills I would like to have, and I always put myself off them because I feel like, oh, I'm not going to be any good. Oh, I'm not going to be able to accomplish what I want. I'm just dead, aren't I? Almost. Uh, neutralize. Flying knee. Flying knee, blur. And then that's what it always feels like. It feels like, oh yeah, I'm never good enough. Oh, I'm not going to do this. Oh, I'm not going to do that. And like, those are always the worries that you end up having. This is what I hate about Time Eater is the setup that heal and then straight into this is not fair, man. Somehow we survived on that turn. Somehow. Uh, defend. But we're not... Again, look, straight away, straight into it. It's like... <laughs> uh, how am I meant to win? How was I even meant to win that? Horrible boss. I absolutely hate it. Eh, but at least we got there. We got to the floor 50. We faced off against Time Eater and we lost anyway. But yeah, so thanks for listening to all my ramblings. You know, it's always appreciated to have any viewers kind of watching all this stuff and getting all the way through and listening to a madman talk while playing a game. But yeah, again, if you join, do enjoy these videos, do leave a like, subscribe to see more, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.